This is a Microsoft Excel 2010 video about uh, building a shared construction punch list. This is part four, validating data. This is the spreadsheet. Uh, the last part of the video after part three. We had some uh, punch list items in there. And we're going to take those out for right now since we're going to be doing some new data entry. One important reason for validating or checking that data is so that uh, when you try to analyze it, uh, things are consistent and, and things are named consistently. It makes it much easier to search and filter the list and everything else. Now I've taken the uh, liberty here of adding a second sheet to this spreadsheet. And uh, we've named that validation. And it looks like this. Uh, here we have uh, these are basically just Excel columns, which have, uh, in the case of um, this column, we have it's for divisions of um, work that's being done, which we'd seen that column uh, already in the spreadsheet. And then we have some data here for um, the uh, different categories of approving the punch list, starting it out where we have initials, name, and title. So there's uh, nothing special here. The, the column widths are you know, just chosen to look good. And um, we have also here a punch list beginning date and a closing date. So the reason for uh, putting all these on the second page is so that we can have uh, a list to choose from and when we're entering uh, data on that first page. So I've put some names in here. This uh, division list is a standard master format. But the um, these are just random names that are in here for demonstration purposes to show how this works. So in order to implement this, uh, the first step in this process is that we have to uh, use a thing called uh, named ranges. And we do that by going to the formula tab and we have name manager. So we're going to start out here by going into name manager. Here we'll be creating some new names for some ranges. So we go to enter a name for the range. I'm going to call this uh, division. And it's going to ask for uh, what it refers to. We click over here. Now it gives us the opportunity to select uh, what we want to be in that range. So I'm just going to go and select this whole list over to here. Click OK. And basically, that does what I want to do. It's D9 through D33. And it shows now on the list. Now I'm going to go and um, name some of these other ranges that we need to do. And um, I'm going to go new. And I'm going to name this one um, for adding the jobs. This will be just somebody who observed the, job, or the uh, punch list item. And so I'm naming that now. Uh, there's a limit as to what kind of characters you can use in these names. And instead of spacing, you need to use underscores. And so it's just letters and that uh, underscore. And this is going to be uh, the initials for the people who are on that list to uh, add items to the list. And so I'm going to go right here and just select this whole thing. So we left plenty of space there for, for names. And basically, that's how I want to do that. I'm going to click OK. Now we can see we, we've added that many branch. So I'm going to go and uh, continue with this uh, procedure of, of naming these. And, uh, it's a, basically the same thing that we're doing there. We're going to name all those initial columns that are on there. We're also going to name the two uh, date cells. Now here we have all the uh, naming done, and you can see that I use the terms begin date and closing date it refers to these cells right here. 
so that it is named. We'll close this. And now uh, you can check any of these by going up to this list right here, uh, the name box, and you can see all those things that have been entered. So if I go and go to begin date, it shows me right there. And if I go to uh, use the, the terms add, approve, forward, observe, so uh, add forward should take me over to here. And you can see that it highlights that right there. So basically that's how we, we name these ranges. And uh, of course, you know, all of this stuff is available on that uh, free template for download at drinkrestructure.com. I'm going to go back to the punch list and look at uh, doing some data validation. And we're going to start doing that right here with item description. We do some very basic data validation right here. Now we're doing some very basic uh, data validation on item description. And this one, uh, we go to data, data validation. And here, uh, our validation criteria are pretty easy. We're going to allow any value in this uh, item right here. But we are going to present an input message. So it's a little box that pops up uh, when you're putting something into the cell. And here we're going to call this um, item description. And for our input message on that, uh, we're just going to put in there, describe the punch list item. And OK. So now you can see that this is the box that pops up when you select that cell. So I'm going to go to location and do something similar. No really special validation here. Uh, here we're going to call this one uh, location. And then we're going to uh, put a message in there. Check our settings and allows any value. And it's just going to be a pop up box. Now we're going to do some uh, more serious data validation here in terms of uh, division. And we're going to go to a list, and our source here is going to be the type equal. Here, and we're going to provide an input message titled specification division, and then we're going to ask what division this is under. And we'll click, click OK. Now you can see that there's an arrow that's shown up on here, and we go and click that arrow, it gives us a choice of any of the items on this list. So that way, it provides for that um, getting exactly a consistent name and giving some explanation of what these divisions are for. Now we're going to go and also uh, do some uh, qualification on the date. And here we're going to be doing the date. And we're going to say that this is between the start date, which is going to be equal to begin date, and then we're going to say this is uh, the end date is going to be equal to closing date. We're going to have an input message, and that will be titled observed date. And we'll ask the question, what is the date? And then we'll click OK. And you can see the message that pops up there. And finally, we're going to do these initials. And here our validation is going to be on a list. And equal add observe. Input message will be titled and observe item 
I'm going to put my save. Let me select the regular false. And basically, this continues uh, right across the columns so that we have a, a separate list on the validation page uh, for each one of these. So now all of these uh, have been added. Uh, we have uh, validation for all of those columns. Now we'll go in to uh, test this out a little bit. Uh, we'll go in here to date. And uh, the date range we have is between the 17th and the 15th of July. So I'm going to put in June 30th. And this gives me an error message. Uh, if I were to put in July 1st, the license is fine. Uh, we'll go in here and um, I can put in some uh, initials. Apparently they're not on the list. Uh, if I put in the correct initials, ones that are on the list, so I'm just going to put these initials here. Those work. So if I put initials that are on the list, I can either select it or I just type them in. And over here, I'm just going to describe an item. And I'm going to take this right through to approval. See how this has turned white using that, uh, demonstrating that the uh, conditional formatting. And I'm going to shoot right through these here and just go to this end one. And you can see how it lines it out. So that's the behavior that we expect uh, from the whole list. Now that uh, I've added this, I've done the data validation for this uh, first line. And um, what I can do then is select this whole line and use the fill handle to uh, copy this. Down. And I'm going to copy this down to the uh, first line. And this puts a line in this. So I'm going to reformat this line. In terms of border, and I'm going to delete these data items. I right, copy the rest of the way down. And it gets them all formatted. And this um, takes care of basically that part. Now we have one other feature, and that is we've uh, produced this list over on the next page, which has got all these people who are authorized to forward uh, punch list items and approve them. But the problem is somebody could easily go in and just add their initials to this list. So what we are going to do is secure this uh, sheet. And we do that by going to uh, the review tab and here we have protect sheet. And so we're going to choose that we're not going to allow anything to be done here. So we're not going to check any of these boxes. So we're not going to allow users to, and they, they really don't have to do anything with this particular worksheet. We'll protect it, and we'll put a password in there. And you have to remember the password, you'll be able to unprotect the sheet. So, but we're protecting it. Now, I'm clicking on and it says the seller chart you're trying to change is protected and read-only. That gives us protection. However, when we go back onto this sheet, we can still make changes to things. So this would be the way we put the spreadsheet online, able to add things to and uh, approve and keep a running status of the punch list. So in order to uh, 
add anything, uh, if we wanted to add somebody else who can initial this, uh, the idea would be we would typically have a, a large number of people who are able to add items, and then a pretty small number who would forward this on uh, to the person who would approve, uh, depending on how it works on a particular project. That approval might be the architect, and maybe it would be an owner, or somebody, a general contractor would be in this forwarding section. And then the observers might be you know, different people from the trades. So they could uh, they'd be unlikely to put their own punch list item on there, but uh, they'd be especially good in terms of uh, saying that it was done. So let's say you've got a cracked light fixture. When it gets replaced, uh, the electrical contractor could uh, go and put down on here that it's observed complete. And then uh, once that gets approved, it's crossed off the punch list. You know, one important item here to keep in mind is that uh, in these uh, lists that have a, a lot of extra space on them, you need to leave the first one blank. And the reason for that is that the uh, punch list page, the list of names that you're given, if it's blank, it'll go down the list to the first blank one. It'll put you at the beginning and the end of the list, and you'd have to scroll up on there to see any of the names. But by putting the first one in here blank, uh, it stops on that, and you'll be able to see on that menu all of these names. Where you have a, the whole range is full, uh, which is what you have over uh, on that uh, on this one, where you have uh, the full range. That's not necessary in this case. On that one, that wouldn't be a problem. And so that's about it for data validation. In the uh, next video, we'll be covering data protection. We'll be protecting the sheet so that you don't get uh, unauthorized changes to all of this information for data validation, and also to restrict changes on the main uh, punch list so that that stuff is only accessible in the areas it's supposed to be. For further information, uh, go to drinfrastructure.com where there is a template for free download with this spreadsheet.